I'd like to call the March 3rd, 2014 Finance Committee meeting to order. Chair would entertain a motion for the consideration of claims. Make a motion for the payment of uh, presented claims. Okay, and if you could read those numbers for us for the motion. <clears throat> consideration of claims to be paid in the amount of $116,821.83, manual checks in the amount of uh, $3,084.58, and checks written for payroll liabilities for um, February 21st in the amount of $345,823 and 27 cents for a total of $465,729.68. And I will second that motion. Are there any questions on the bills that you have? None. Okay, and I just had one question. It was on page 7 of eight, uh, 10. Okay. Um, item 18489. Um, and the only reason it stood out was a sewer cleanup upright construction for 520 North 7th East. And we haven't seen sewer cleanup. I didn't know if that had any connection with our, since we've moved to the sewer line insurance on individual properties. So I was just curious about that particular item. You know anything about that? Well, that's, what, what was we'll the call number it? again? Um, it was 18489. It's on page page seven of ten. It'd be in the packet, uh, page eight. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I don't believe this has anything relation to slip because. Okay. I, um, but we're going to look it up here just to see it, it. It probably was something that happened with something that we caused that we had to clean up. Is that what it is? Do you want to comment on it? Donner, um, we jetted a sewer and the sewer um, exploded back through the pipes in their house, and so we were responsible for that. Okay. Yeah, and I just wanted to double check because we hadn't seen anything since the slip thing was taken out. So I have no further questions. So all those in favor of the approval of claims say aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carried. Um, at this time, because we don't have a full committee, we're going to delay the election of the Finance Committee Chairman until we have a full committee. Is there any other business for us today, Mr. Weaver? No, just, just a reminder of our goal-setting session tonight at 6 o'clock at the CWC. Okay. All right, meeting adjourned. Dean, regular meeting of the Riverton City Council to order at 7 p.m. Would Council Member Cannon lead us, Canan lead us in the pledge, please? to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Would the city clerk please conduct the roll call? Yes, Your Honor. Councilman Rich Gard. Here. Councilman Martin I'm sorry, Canan? Here. Okay, thank you. Councilman Jonathan Fabian? Here. Councilman Kyle Larson? Here. Councilman Todd Smith? Here. Mayor Ron Warpness? I'm present. Uh, the chair would entertain a motion to excuse Council Member uh, Christensen from this evening's meeting. Your Honor, I would move. I would move to excuse Council Member Christensen this evening. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. I declare that we have a quorum this evening. Uh, approval of the agenda. The chair would entertain a motion for the approval of the agenda. Your Honor, I would move to approve the agenda. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there a discussion? Your Honor, is this the time? Of, should we pull, do we need to pull that? From the finance that you ordered to approve the agenda. Oh, I was just going to uh, pull that from the consent the minutes from February 18th if we could pull those from the consent agenda and consider those separate oh okay a little later than you were right again. okay all right <clears throat> okay we have a motion and a second on the agenda uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. aye. opposed same sign motion carries <clears throat> communication from the floor citizens comments Anyone in the audience wishing to address the council regarding an item that is already on the agenda will be given an opportunity to speak later on. 
I would ask those individuals who wish to address the council at this time to approach the podium and identify yourself for the record. Mr. Gores, did you have anything? <laughs> okay. okay. Would the city clerk please read the consent agenda uh, items by title only, please? <coughs> Yes, Your Honor. Approval of the minutes February 18th, 2014 regular council meeting. Approval of the minutes March 3rd, 2014 finance committee meeting. Approval of finance committee recommendations for March 3rd, 2014. Approval of delinquent fines of deceased defendants March, 2004, March 2014. Ordinance number 14 004, second reading, 2012 ICC code adoption. Proposed ordinance, and I'll read the title now, Mayor. Proposed ordinance number 14-004, an ordinance amending title 15, buildings and construction codes to revise chapter 15.04 of the Riverton Municipal Code and repealing all ordinances or parts of ordinances in conflict therewith and providing for an effective date. And taxi cab license uh, application received from R&M Taxi. Okay, thank you. Your Honor, it's the recommendation of the Finance Committee for the approval of claims to be paid in the amount of $116,821.83, manual checks in the amount of $3,084.58, checks written for payroll liabilities for February 21, 2014 in the amount of $345,823.27 for a total of $465,729.68. Thank you. The chair would entertain a motion regarding the consent agenda. Your Honor, I would make the motion to approve consent with the removal of the minutes from February 18th to consider separately. Okay. I'll second. It's been moved and seconded to uh, approve the <coughs> consent agenda uh, with the uh, removal of minutes from February 18th. Uh, is there further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Same sign. Motion carries. And we will now uh, entertain a motion regarding uh, the minutes of February 18th. Your Honor, I would like to make the motion to approve the minutes from February 18th, 2014 with the following change. Um, to correct the minutes to reflect that Councilman Gard abstained from voting on the consent agenda um, due to the property rezone on that and he did not abstain from the vote on the approval of the agenda on those minutes. Okay. Is there a second to that motion? Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to approve uh, the February 18th minutes with the uh, changes as noted. Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign, motion carries. Mayor votes aye. Ordinance number 14-002, third and final reading, rezone 1415 West Monroe. <clears throat> Would the city clerk please read ordinance number 14002 by title only, please? Yes, Your Honor. This is propo proposed ordinance number 14-002 on third reading, an ordinance amending the zoning district map of the city of Riverton, Wyoming, designating the rezone of a portion of 1415 West Monroe Avenue, city of Riverton, Fremont County, Wyoming, from BGA Residential District to I-1 Light Industrial District. Your Honor? Yes. I will be abstaining from that vote. Thank you. Okay. The chair would entertain a motion regarding 14-002. Your Honor, I would move for the approval of ordinance number 14-002 on third and final reading. Okay. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there a discussion? Uh, one question. What, what, what are we looking at uh, future? Um, usage of that property we're changing zoning there must be some what's the future of that piece of property just what it what fits the zoning mr. Weaver would you like to comment on that or have mr. Paskett <clears throat> I don't know if we were aware of what they plan to put there your um, honor um, I believe Sandy has said previously that something about storage units but I don't know that for a fact yeah, tip, sometimes when, when they put forth a, a zone change, it's not necessary of what they're going to be putting there, just so that it complies with the zoning regulations in our code. Very good. But Mr. Gard could probably address that since it is 
I think I abstained. No. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't voted yet. <laughs> um, all of the property that lies to the west of that and to the north is already I-1. And so it brings it into accordance with existing properties. So that's the idea is just to make it uniform throughout. We have that beautiful chrome forest called the uh -huh. the power distribution. Yeah. <laughs> and so we're trying to put a buffer zone in there oh. okay. between it and our residential. Thank you. Okay. Are we ready to vote then? Any other discussion? Uh, would the city clerk please conduct a roll call vote, please? Yes, Your Honor. I've recorded your abstention, Councilman Guard. Councilman Knan? Mm, yes. Councilman Jonathan Fabian? Yes. Councilman Kyle Larson? Yes. Councilman Todd Smith? Yes. Mayor Ron Warpness? Mayor votes yes. Uh, motion uh, passes as presented. Agenda item number nine is ordinance number 14-003, third and final reading, Main Street Signs. Uh, would the city clerk please uh, read ordinance number 14-003 by title only? Yes, Your Honor. Ordinance number 14-003, th third and final reading. An ordinance amending Title 17 Zoning, Chapter 17.22 Signs to revive Section 17.22.080 Sign Locations of the Riverton Municipal Code and repealing all ordinances or parts of ordinances in conflict therewith and providing for an effective date. Okay. The Chair would entertain a motion regarding Ordinance Number 14-003. Your Honor, I would make the motion to pass ordinance number 14-003 on third and final reading. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Is there a discussion? Your Honor? Yes. Councilman uh, Fabian. I would, I would just like to note that I did take the opportunity to send a copy of the proposed ordinance to uh, Jerry Kinsler and ask that he share it with some of the other downtowners and did not hear back any um, anything really, so I'm guess I'm assuming that there isn't any uh, pushback from the downtown businesses at this time. Okay. Okay, any other discussion? Would the city clerk please conduct a roll call vote, please? Yes, Your Honor. Councilman Rich Gard. Yes. Councilman Martin Kanan. Yes. Councilman Jonathan Fabian. Yes. Councilman Kyle Larson. Yes. Councilman Todd Smith. Yes. Mayor Ron Warpness. Votes yes. Motion passes at this time. Uh, agenda item number 10 is WAM resolutions discussion. Uh, City Administrator's report, please. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, every year, the Wyoming Association of Municipalities asks cities to submit resolutions to the WAM Board of, a Director, Board of a Directors as a basis to set policy priorities for the coming legislative year. <laughs> Uh, Riverton last year submitted two resolutions related to the beer tax and the local option sales tax. Um, I've asked this question from several people, got some comments back, and so staff just prepared a few items that you may consider um, that you can give direction to us as to what resolutions to prepare so that we can pass them and get them in to the WAM board by, by April. So the first one would be the beer tax again. That would increase the tax on beer to the national average of 28 cents per gallon. And the money would be earmarked to address alcohol abuse statewide. Um, the local option sales tax is allow voters and municipalities to impose optional sales and use tax that would be limited to the geographical area of the municipality. And that just goes back to the, the idea that if Riverton wants something for just them and sometimes it's hard to get the whole county to buy into something that Riverton wants it seems like Riverton should have the option to put that out there and and raise the money <coughs> to build or whatever they're gonna do uh, we we always use the analogy of, of a fire truck why would anybody else in the county want to put money towards purchasing a fire truck for Riverton um, and so it seems like we should be able to have the option to oppose the tax on ourselves to pay for something that we want just here in Riverton. So that's one. Uh, unemployment, we actually have two uh, issues in unemployment. Um, the first is when an employee has been terminated for cause and unemployment was denied. Then that employee goes and gets a job somewhere else 
and they get terminated within that time frame, then all of a sudden the city gets a bill for um, paying off the the, the uh, <clears throat> unemployment on that particular em employee that it was in the past. The second issue is when an employee resigns um, their position because they're all going on to a new job or personal reasons. Um, they, they go find another job, they get terminated again, and once again we get uh, a bill in the mail for unemployment saying that we're within the look back period of the 18 months, therefore we get charged for that when it wasn't the city that was at fault at all on any of these cases, but yet we get stuck with the bill. And uh, we think that's something that the legislative people should try to fix and you know get whammed to try to support that. Um, the other one is the liquor license local control and that really came when I talked when we had our liquor license discussion and I talked to a gentleman at the liquor division and he said really the cities don't have a lot of teeth when it comes to liquor control and you ought to be talking to WAM to try to get something changed about that and so I just bring that up from a from an issue of if you want to have more control and pushing that <coughs> And then the, the final one is just the Wyoming Retirement System rules for elected officials. Um, there should be some sort of an exemption or in the rules or state statute that an elected official doesn't have to resign to, reti uh, to retire from their own personal job. And that was, uh, a few people brought that up. So those are just some ideas that we came up with. Um, if there's any others that you consider let us know and we'll bring forth resolutions. We probably need to do that uh, between the next meeting and then the first meeting in April because I think we have to have them to them by the 12th or 14th of April. Okay. So you're just looking uh, for direction from the council at yeah. this time regarding these specific? These or any other ones. Because okay. um, I think in the past we just kind of brought resolutions forward and uh, I'd rather have that coming from the council so we're not bringing forth resolutions that are just going to be denied. Your Honor. Yes. This unemployment um, issue, is, would that only be as it affects cities? Because all employers are in that same yeah. look back period. Are you trying for all employers or just the city? I, I, municipalities? I think it would apply to anybody. Okay. Thank you. Your Honor. Yes. Councilman Fabian. I think that uh, something regarding the uh, the airport and perhaps Wyoming Aeronautics um, supporting, you know, the opportunity for um, looking at carriers might be worth pursuing through WAM. I know that, you know, while we are blessed to have the airport that we have, I know that we have also discussed that, you know, it's awfully expensive to get any competition in and perhaps that would be worth looking at. I think that's a good idea. So maybe some support from the state in ways of helping to subsidize that? Is that what you're saying? Or Yeah. Okay. I think so. I, I guess maybe a, a way to approach this. Uh, let's go ahead and have a motion regarding uh, the uh, resolutions as presented, and then we can have the discussion. Uh, is there a motion uh, regarding the WAM resolution? Your Honor, I'd make the motion to accept the WAM re resolutions as Design. I'll second. Okay, and it's been moved and seconded. Now we can have the discussion. Um, and uh, are there any of these that anyone has a lot of heartburn with that they want to don't feel comfortable with, or? Uh, Sir, which ones did they put put forward last year, last time? Uh, we had the beer tax. <clears throat> And we had the local option sales tax, as I recall, were the two. And, and what was the, uh, I guess, what was the feeling there at the, you know, at the, I mean, did they, did they at least get discussed or did they just kind of die? Well, regarding the beer tax, we got uh, 19 votes. Uh, the last time uh, Representative Goggles uh, brought it forward, according to Patrick, um, he only had two votes. So I guess we're making headway. And we did get quite a bit of publicity across the state, and, and I felt pretty good about it. Uh, I think if it hadn't have been a shortened session, uh, you know, we might have stood a better chance. But um, it's something that 
uh, I feel the problem isn't going away, and so uh, the need is still there. Uh, regarding the local option sales tax, I don't remember just how that one, I know uh, Representative Miller was uh, bringing it forward and was supporting it, and uh, but there was a lot of them that just didn't make it through because of the uh, shortened time span and, and uh, whatnot. Uh, and that one, um, I don't know why, but a lot of the counties don't have the problem that Fremont County has with local option taxes. Take Natrona County, for example, you've got one population center, you pass it in Natrona County, it, they don't care what Midwest thinks. Well, we're divided across the county and we have to care you know, and come up with a plan, whether it's a, a senior citizen center or uh, our latest 1% was uh, the first time I'm familiar with that a local option tax has passed in, in Fremont County. Uh, but it was a lot of work to, to, get it, uh, to get it passed. And if we did have the opportunity, then we could look seriously at, say, a, a recreation center. If the citizens wanted a recreation center here, then they could pass a 1% tax just local and it would take us uh, a few years to, to generate enough money to pay for it, just with a local tax here. But um, at least we would be working towards something that the community wants. The way it is now, we don't have that opportunity. Yeah. You know, we just don't have the opportunity, so. I, I think they're both uh, excellent resolutions. I'm just mm -hmm. thinking, you know, if there's ways that we can beef it up and make it stronger so that they don't see the same, you know, verbiage come back uh, a, a second time. Well, I, I think that that the resolution just, as I understand it, is suggesting that the council supports the concept, and then we can work on how to flesh it out and how to how to make it uh, move forward. Um, but Your Councilman Honor. Gard, Councilman Smith. Your Honor, um, Smith. Councilman Gard and I did get a little bit of feedback on those resolutions when oh. we were down in Cheyenne last week. Um, not that it's bad to propose it again through WAM, but the beer tax doesn't have a lot of support right now in the legislature. It's probably going to be a, a long-term effort to try to move in that direction. Um, concerning the local option sales tax, and Councilman Gard can correct me if I'm wrong, but I seem to hear something or get the impression that unless uh, WAM could get the counterpart from the <coughs> counties, whatever their um, statewide organization through the county commissioners, to support something like that local option sales tax that it probably would be a no-go in the legislature until both WAM and the, I forget what the organization. WISAC. WISAC. Yeah. Yeah. Would, would support that resolution as well that the legislature wouldn't take it very seriously until both of those counterparts are gonna <laughs> move forward on that particular. Mm -hmm. And I, that's what uh, uh, Councilman Canan is talking about, you know, that. Yeah. If we do want to support that, then that's the kind of thing that we have to put forward. Uh, I know when we were working on the 1% optional, uh, all of the municipalities in Fremont County passed that, and as well as the county commissioners. And if we hadn't had that kind of uniform support across the county, it wouldn't have passed. So I think the same thing is true. Uh, if you're waiting for the legislators to get behind the beer tax, the second coming of Christ will happen. Um, so I think it's something that we're just going to have to um, fight it and press it as hard as we can. Um, and, uh, you know, maybe at some point in time why the, the state will uh, finally wake up to the fact of how much uh, alcohol is costing our state and how it's being paid for by all of the citizens. And this is just a very small step to um, to help uh, defray those costs. So, my, que it's my question difficult. is, uh, Your Honor, uh, we're only there is a only twenty eight cents on a gallon of beer. No, there's two cents on a gallon of beer. Well, it says the that's national the average is twenty eight cents. Yeah. We want to raise it to twenty eight <clears throat> cents. That's all there is on the national average. Mm -hmm. Right now, the tax. Don't get me started on this, but um, I'm going to. Yeah, I'm gonna, <laughs> on a on a case of beer, there's four and a half cents tax. Remarkable. That's you know, and yet the legislators don't want to touch it. Well, so let's not. Anyway, I can say why not too. Yep. 
and that's 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 the battle and it will be difficult I agree with you Councilman Smith that um, I've talked to their legislators you know their lobbyists and and um, in fact they would like to turn it back where there's no tax on beer at all uh, I had one legislator tell me that it only generates two hundred and fifty six thousand um, dollars of beer and um, for that little bit of money it's not even worth doing so so anyway it's a it's an ongoing battle and it's just a question of whether we want to pursue it or not or or want to just roll over I guess your honor yes for um, councilman Canan and, and Larson wham is a is a legislative arm of municipalities and there's 99 municipalities that are in that association and so this is your chance if you had an idea of something that you thought needed to be changed statewide you could put forth a resolution to Steve Steve would send it on to wham they would run it through their mill and it would either it could come out with a pass and no pass a, a watch and, but they would they would help you pursue that through the legislature so if you had a concern about um, drunk driving or or something that you thought was not getting the attention wham is a lot larger organization and, and we have this opportunity to put these resolutions out to wham and and try to clean their support statewide so that's that's what, that's where these resolutions go They're, they are they are resolutions that people have thought through and they don't just go to nowhere they, they go to a wham conference and, and they discuss the the good and the bad and what they would generate and what they wouldn't and then the wham group is able to lobby for them if they deem that they want to lobby for them if it if it meets their criteria so thank you that's that's all we're talking this about. last year why wham did support the uh, beer tax and and uh, um, they were supportive of it um, they weren't um, lobbying for it however but they were supportive of it they weren't just watching it so it uh, you know I well your honor uh, I, I hate to come back to this but um, maybe they don't have the same problem do they have a do all of the 99 communities have a detox center in their in their locality uh, do all of them have a, a park with a, uh, stacks of beer bottles uh, uh, I'm saying it, you're only interested in it if if your backyard's getting the garbage and uh, uh, unfortunately we're located where that area occurs well we do have uh, the state of Wyoming um, is up there in lights in terms of alcohol abuse across the state and so the liquor industry would like to um, um, promote that idea that it's only Fremont County that has the problem and so that Fremont County is trying to get the rest of the state to pay for its problem okay and we all readily acknowledge that we do have a problem and and uh, but if you look at the um, industry statistics across the state uh, we've got uh, as many DUIs across the state as we do in Fremont County so it's not just something that's local and the amount of, of uh, negative impact that it has um, is just huge uh, in fact volunteers of America that just took over our crisis center didn't come from Riverton okay it came from Sheridan and it came from Sheridan because they've got a problem really that's true <laughs> so anyway but but uh, they would like to suggest that it's just a Fremont County problem and and uh, you know paint us with that brush but it's not not accurate so yeah. yes um, councilman guards dissertation just um, reminded me of uh, when mr. Blumenshine I believe it was was here speaking about uh, recreation and his thought of pursuing a more um, I guess equitable framework for distribution of recreation dollars maybe based on population or something along those lines rather than solely being based on where the revenue was generated um, 
would be another good resolution. I don't know if that's not something that maybe we could bring forward in support of the work we're trying to do there. I would think so. I would think that would be a good good resolution to pursue. Your Honor. Yes. In the in the voting um, pamphlet that they passed out at WHAM, they had the resolutions that they are watching and the resolutions that they are supporting. And I can bring that in and give it to Steve in the May. There was a number of other resolutions that you may want to put your support behind. That packet of information that we just received from WHAM, it may have had all that information in it. I don't know. I didn't read it that closely. But, but I think these are things, as Stephen pointed out, that we can bring up if you have ideas that would be good resolutions. And that last one was a good one. Uh, I agree. But it uh, sounds like we're all supportive of these resolutions as presented then. So let's go ahead and... Um, one more question on this on the liquor license local control we have uh, the way this reads the city doesn't have a lot of other than when we found out that uh, that only a failure to pay sales tax um, what type of local control would we be interested in Mr. Weaver. your honor I, I I was thinking of you know if if we had a problem with one where we could put them on a two-week suspension type thing or or something that, that we could draw their attention to because right now what the liquor division was saying is you you can get them up in the front and you can kind of chew them out as a council and say next time this comes out we may not want to renew this and do those kind of things and then you end up in court but just a little bit more teeth where we can say hey we're done with this and we we don't like the way this is going and and uh you know just some sort of probation type things of well, not to plow new ground, but aren't there somewhere where the cities have more control that we could look at that has functioned in the past or future, or somewhere that, the, you know, we don't invent the wheel that uh, works for controlling, that has more teeth, uh, not, not more teeth, but um, aligns their objectives with ours. Yes, they want to sell a product. We want them to sell a product. Uh, we don't want to control it, but we want uh, responsible management of their sale of their product. Yeah, no, I, I think, Your Honor, that's uh, we'd probably have, we'd have to go outside the state just because everyone's under the same realm as we are here in the state, but we could go to a different state and look at how they regulate uh, liquor licenses, and they may already have a model set up. Okay. Thank you. Your Honor. Yes. This might be a good time to put forth the idea. You know, we, we had that um, letter that I gave everybody, and I think everybody was on the council when we passed that out. Uh, and it was the objection of the Liquor Association to further intrusion uh, by the city. And so maybe there's a better way to... Um, who was the gentleman that came from Douglas? They gave us those statistics that, oh. uh, about a year ago. We might, Ernie Johnson. Ernie, Ernie Johnson. Johnson. Mm -hmm. We might be able to get Ernie to, to come back and give us some feedback. And maybe maybe instead of attacking our liquor in, uh, industry, maybe we could put together a, a community task force of, of individuals that would help us uh, with some ideas on how to target. Uh, I don't really think that... And I think the chief supports that. I, I shouldn't put words in his mouth, but he didn't want to pull anybody's license and hasn't for the time that I've sat here. And so I don't know that it's a real problem of pulling licenses as it is um, interaction and getting that positive information and trying to make um, a more positive statement to, to what we could, the changes that we could make. And maybe, I, I know prevention is working uh, they they do believe that that um, merit point system works, and there's a, a number of major cities that use it. Um, maybe something like that can be adapted, or maybe if we get some positive feedback from things that we could change inside the inside our own city, it wouldn't have to necessarily deal with liquor licenses, but it could deal with other <coughs> other issues of 
public intoxication, which I think is more of our problem, uh, not so much who's selling as what we do after we get our hands on it. I don't, I don't think that it's anyone's intention that we want to pull anyone's license. No. I don't think that's what uh, Mr. Weaver's talking about, but I think when you do get down in the trenches and you start running into problems and you find that you don't have any authority, it's, uh, you know, it's a little bit frustrating uh, to, uh, um, and I think that's all Stephen is talking about is to, um, you know, perhaps not just take it off the table, but have it if you have to use it. And, and uh, we certainly would use it with discretion, but um, I don't, I don't envision uh, ever wanting to um, have to threaten to pull someone's license, but I do think that they need to understand that we do have that authority. And I think what Stephen is saying is that we don't have that authority. Is that correct, Stephen? Or? Yeah, Your Honor. I mean, we do have the authority at the once time per year, but then there's the process where if you deny that, then you're going to be tied up in court because obviously that's taking away someone's livelihood. Mm -hmm. You better have your argument. Yeah, your, you better have a reason for yeah. what you're doing it for, and that goes back to maybe we've talked about in the past of having criteria of, of what would be the basis for doing something like having that. Having a little more flexibility? or Yeah, instead of just saying, well, you have 300 calls this year and you had 250 last year, so therefore we're going to pull it. Mm -hmm. That doesn't have a lot of substance to it compared to, mm -hmm. well, what kind of what kind of issues did you have in the past year that would trigger something to that magnitude? But I think anything in this area is going to get probably a certain amount of pushback, you know, when you start trying to change rules and um, it's an interesting interesting lobby okay we've got a motion and a second on the floor regarding the proposed um, um, motion uh, let's go ahead and have the vote on it then all those in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. opposed same sign motion carries mayor votes aye And once again, I think anyone that has any other ideas to, to put forward, why now's a good time to do it. Okay, council committee reports and council members round table. Councilman Smith, you wanna lead off? Alrighty. Um, Councilman Gard and I had a great time down at the WAM convention last week in Cheyenne. Uh, the weather uh, sent us home a little early. They canceled the last session of the day and mm. Then the storm didn't quite occur, at least here in Riverton, but other places around the state got some snow. Um, our next um, finance committee, we will elect a chairman for the finance committee. We didn't have a full quorum yesterday, and so we'll do that at the next meeting. And then the last item is uh, I'm looking forward to being back on the chamber board, um, and their meeting is this Thursday at 530, so I'll have a report at the next meeting. Thanks. Thank you. Councilman Larson. Nothing here, Your Honor. Okay. Councilman Fabian. Um, the uh, animal shelter met and uh, they actually um, have been working with uh, an architect, um, Colleen Nelson, who is actually helping them out at no charge to them, which I think is awesome. And uh, they are actually trying to look at a few options just to see if uh, changing the facility down there either expanding or or redoing the layout or something might uh, might better serve their needs and so they're they're looking at some options where that's concerned and uh, and perhaps uh, depending on where it all falls they may be able to move forward with trying to get some uh, some funding to to do more in that direction, and uh, that's all I have at this time. Okay. Councilman Canan. Nothing, sir. Okay. Councilman Gard. Um, once again, just to to, reiter to reiterate what Councilman Smith said, we went to WHAM, and it was uh, probably out of the three that I've been to, um, this one was very informative, and we had some really good uh, topics that we discussed and I would encourage those uh, that want to get further education to 
to continue with those. The topics were very appointed and, and to speak directly to the legislature was, was a good opportunity. Um, the other the other thing I we had was uh, Jonathan and I were both on the rec committee and uh, our last night meeting pre prevented us from attending that and I'll try to find out what they did. I should have done that today and got back to you but they did have a meeting last night and we were already at a previous scheduled party so we weren't there. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay. City Administrator's report, please. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, our work session next week will be with uh, John Schumacher. He'll be here to talk about Indian law. Uh, we'll also talk about the two topics that we talked about in pre-meeting was the uh, relation to the taxi cab and tree trimming and private investigators and also park reservation deposits. Uh, we're just going to, as part of the one of the council goals, was to try to flesh out some of those things before we bring them in front of the council. So we're going to talk about those two items. Um, we, we're starting to advertise for the public works position, uh, public works director position this week. Um, we had an interesting meeting with YDOT uh, regarding our downtown. Um, and I, I drove by there uh, tonight just to kind of look at it, and it really doesn't make a lot of sense at all of what they're proposing. Um, obviously, when, when Main Street was rebuilt, they were intimately involved in that whole process and approved plans and they told us to put the decorative benches and trash receptacles all up in the front because they wanted a, at least a four or five foot pathway that's straight uh, next to the buildings for ADA purposes and uh, now they're coming to us and saying just the opposite that we need to move our benches and trash receptacles up near the near the buildings so they can have this clear shot. The, the issue what I saw tonight is those are right in line with the decorative lights and those type of things. It makes sense to keep it all up front because then you do have a complete clear passage um, going up there. And so uh, they're going to come back and meet with us sometime this summer, but we'll be challenging that, um, just so you know that. Um, also, the Roberts Rules of Training, Roberts Rules of Order, uh, we'll be at our next council meeting, and so the, the idea in that is we'll do our normal meeting just like we did tonight, go through everything, and then once it's over, we'll adjourn and we'll go right into Robert's Rules of Order training. Um, we have a fairly light uh, council meeting the next time right now. Uh, it'll take about an hour and a half. This is the only time that the trainer could come on a Tuesday, and Tuesdays seem to work the best for most people. We have conflicts with other times, so um, that would be interesting. Also, the final, um, the Rendezvous Committee, uh, Rendezvous, is it Rendezvous Committee? Rendezvous Committee is submitting an application uh, for tourism asset dollars at the Chamber, um, and they'll also be submitting an application to the Fremont County Rec Board. And this is for uh, rendezvous days. We just wanted to keep you in light of that. Um, we are going to be submitting to try to get some money for that event and for the balloons. So thank you. Your Honor. Yes, Councilman Garden. Didn't we approve some money for the rendezvous committee on the rec board? Yeah, Your Honor, that was for the school district 25. And this is for the Fremont County rec and the tourism asset dollars which is tad through the chamber <clears throat> they're just gonna they're applying for grants to get some more money so it's not going to the rec board no okay i was gonna try to help you out but you're on your own <laughs> <laughs> okay um i'd just like to thank everyone for the retreat last evening i enjoyed that uh it was good to come together and talk about uh, things that are of a mutual interest and spend time together. I thought that was very good, and I thought Lori did an excellent job. Uh, she always does. She's uh, uh, very easy to work with, and I thought she did a did a good job. So um, we also had a partnering meeting with the Job Corps um, thing, and I don't know if we've talked about that or not. But uh, they indicate that they're about 22 percent done with the project at this time, and uh, they are suggesting that. Uh, as soon as the weather breaks and the frost comes out of the ground, then uh, things are going to be growing up there like mushrooms. 
and so we're very excited about that. Um, I gave them a hard time about we didn't have enough um, publicity in the paper, and then when I opened the paper that evening, well, here's a great big picture of the Job Corps. <laughs> so anyway, it's, um, but it's coming along, and they're a wonderful group of people to work with. Uh, they've been working in below uh, zero temperatures and heating up the ground so they can pour concrete and doing just a lot of work. Um, so it's it's going to all be worth it, though. Um, regarding the uh, meeting that Stephen had with uh, YDOT, <coughs> <coughs> excuse me, I did I didn't attend that meeting. <coughs> But I did have the opportunity to talk with Mr. Gores, <coughs> who was very involved. <coughs> Goodness, who was, <coughs> who was very involved in our Main Street construction when it was being constructed. And then I talked with the chairman of the committee, uh, John Neal, and um, they all remembered it just as I remember it as well. That um, YDOT wanted us to put the uh, accoutrements on the Main Street where they are and for them now to come back and want to move them just doesn't make any sense uh, I received a telephone call from uh, a visually impaired uh, individual that I worked with and I was working with the state and uh, he indicated that, that that would just be an obstacle course uh, for him if they were to move those benches and everything back up next to the building so he was adamantly opposed to it and I told him I said well you might want to come to the meeting if we have it to, to fight that battle but um, I, I agree. I think that we need to challenge that and, and uh, uh, not worry about it. So, yes, Councilman Fabian. Um, just in the vein of the Job Corps, is it is tomorrow night the meet and greet? Yes. Is that correct? From 5.30 to yep. 6 So anybody who wants to come and have a meet and greet with the potential Job Corps operator, that will be right here tomorrow night at 5.30. That's correct. Good, good, good point. Um, the operator is the one, the, the Job Corps is owned by the Department of Labor, and, but, and the operator will actually be the one that's leasing it from the, the uh, Department of Labor and doing the, the work, hiring the staff, the teachers, and uh, doing the day-by-day -day work there. So, um, And this is a bid process. Uh, these operators, uh, there's a number of them from across the United States, and many of them have several job corps that they oversee. So um, it should be interesting to get their perspective. And they're just coming to, I think, look at our community, look at the site of the job corps, see if they want to bid on it and, and like that. So it should be should be an interesting meeting. But thank you for bringing that up, uh, Jonathan. OK, that's all I have. And I apologize for my choking up at this time. Um, it's my understanding that we have an executive session this evening. The chair would entertain a motion to convene into an executive session for the purpose of litigation, considering litigation to which our governing body is or may be a party in accordance with Wyoming Statute 16-4-405 AIII and real estate, consideration of site selection or purchase of real estate in accordance with Wyoming Statute 16-4-405 AVII. Your Honor, yeah. I'd make a motion to <coughs> to adjourn into executive session. Okay. Second. I'll second. Been moved and seconded. Is there a discussion? <coughs> All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries.